Uh, and the first uh, speaker is a, uh, a good friend and colleague of mine, Dr. Hightao Gu, um, who's at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, and he will discuss combinations of direct acting antivirals to decrease the CCC DNA pool. Hightao? Uh, thanks, John, for the, for the introduction, and thanks for this opportunity. Uh, to tell about something about the CCC DNA therapy using combination approach. Okay. So just as what Thomas talked about in the morning, so CCC DNA is the root of the HBV infection. So to unroot the CCC DNA, so uh, first we go through the CCC DNA 101. So CCDNA is the first viral product made by the virus upon infection, uh, and this is an episomal form of the HBV DNA genome that serves as a transcription template in the nucleus of the infected cell. CCDNA itself doesn't replicate, so it only made it through the conversion of the you know, HBV genomic relaxed circular DNA, the RCDNA genome, through the de novo infection as well as the intracellular amplification pathway. CCC DNA is, exists in relatively low copy numbers from one to 50 copies per cell, uh, and it's very stable uh, and may survive mitosis, uh, and it plays a key role in the virus infection persistence, virus reactivation after treatment withdrawal, and also responsible for you know, generating the, uh, the, the mutant virus upon uh, the develop the drug resistance. But unfortunately, CCC DNA is not only indirectly targeted by the current approved antivirals. So the current approved antivirals including uh, interferon and, uh, and the nucleoside analogs. We know interferon has you know, multiple functions to control virus infection, but it's, it's not specifically for HBV. So the, the antiviral efficacy is, is, is limited, and there are also side effects limited its use in, in the hepatitis B patients. Uh, the another arm of the treatment, the nucleoside analogs, they are very potent. The replication inhibitor targets the reverse transcription activity of the virus uh, uh, polymerase. Uh, it has less, but it has less effect on the antigenemia, especially the surface antigen. Uh, it doesn't directly inhibit the CCC DNA replication, uh, the met metabolism, or, or trans transcription. So the CCC DNA remains there as a troublemaker. Uh, so as we talk about CCC DNA, it's relatively stable. So the half-life of the CCC DNA, uh, that's the work from, you know, the animal model using the dark hepatitis B and, and Wuchak hepatitis B virus uh, turned out, uh, you know, even under the uh, nucleus analog treatment in those animals, the CCC DNA half-life is around like 30 to 50 days in, in the liver. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the immunodeficient uh, mass infected with HBV, so a complete loss of CCC DNA solely by hypothesized proliferation cannot be achieved, you know, without blocking the virus you know, spread. That's the nice work done by a more dangerous group. Uh, and this is the, uh, a classical study from Fabian Zulim's group showed that the CCC DNA half-life is long in the, in the nuclear-treated patients, even with intacavir or tenofovir. Uh, and this is partially probably due to, you know, the in, uh, you know, incomplete shutdown of the virus replication or the virus split by those nucleus analogs. Uh, and uh, a, a recent study, uh, which I was also involved, that uh, using the drug-resistant mutant dynamics in the, in the like, uh, lamivudine or tubivudine treated patients, and, and it turned out, you know, the, the calculation is the CCC DNA half-life is not as that long as, as we uh, previously thought, it, it, but still, it, it's about several months. So, but, but this gives give us a hope that if you can completely shut down the virus replication, blocking the, the virus spread or, or the intracellular CCC DNA recycling, you probably can promote the, the degradation of the CCC DNA pool. So the CCC DNA longevity is maintained by the inherent stability and the constant replenishment. So both arms should be blocked in order to decrease and ultimately eliminate the CCC DNA pool. The strategies for pharmacologic intervention of CCC DNA, including so two uh, major strategies, either you can block the CCC DNA biosynthesis, uh, probably together with the nucleus analog to reduce the, the virus load, uh, another one is targeting the CCC DNA itself, which is the pre-existing CCC DNA. You can either reduce its stability or block its transcription activity. 
So uh, with that, I think you know the direct antiviral agent that can directly or indirectly target CCC DNA metabolism, including the several categories. The so first one is targeting the CCC DNA formation. Uh, so it can through you know the de novo CCC DNA synthesis, you can use the neutralizing antibodies, entry inhibitors, or the nuclear import blockers. To block the intracellular recycling, the first strategy is to, to, to further shut down the CCC, the further shut down the, re, re, the replication of the HBV RC DNA. So you can, because the HBV is a reverse transcriptase virus, so you can you know, reduce the HBV uh, pre-genomic RNA, which is the template for reverse transcription. You can block the nucleic, nucleic capsid assembly uh, using the, the reverse transcriptase inhibitors, either nuke or non-nuke or the RSH inhibitor targeting the, you know, the another uh, enzymatic activity of the virus. Uh, and the inhibitors targeting the production of CCC DNA intermediates can also be considered, that including the two uh, intermediates so far have, have been identified, including the deproteinated or protein-free RCDNA and the minor strand closed RCDNA. And, and finally, so if, if you can block the RCDNA nuclear input, uh, and encoding that you can also reduce the CCC DNA uh, uh, production. The second strategy is target the CCC DNA stability. The pre-existing CCC DNA, you know, has a sequence that uh, you know it, it's different with the host genome. So those, uh, you know, the host cellular deaminase has been shown by you know interferon induced uh, Appleback uh, to deaminate the CCC DNA, cause destabilization of it. And there's a designer nucleases, including zinc finger nucleases, Thailand nucleases, and the CRISPR-Cas9. And also there's antisense oligos, maybe can also target the CCC DNA. And there's also, you know, the cytokine can induce the DNA de deaminase, you know, the Appleback 3 and the B and the AID, those, those can be induced by cytokines. So if you prove the, 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 the potency and the specificity of those uh, cytokines, you may also lead to the degradation of the CCC DNA by those mechanisms. The third strategy is targeting the CCC DNA transcription because this is a major function of the CCC DNA in the HBV life cycle. So, and HBX has been shown it's important to maintain the CCC DNA transcription, so HBX inhibitor is warranted. Uh, and liver enriched transcription factor because HBV using those liver specific transcription factor, that's one of the reasons for the liver tropism. So those transcription inhibitor can also be considered. Uh, yeah, the third one is the epigenetic modifier because the CCC DNA is a histone decorated uh, mini chromosome. So the cytokines, the chemicals, or, or CRISPR defective Cas9 you know, fused with the, the epigenetic modifier can also have a potential to shut down the CCC DNA transcription. I'm not going to go through over all the, all the, you know, the strategies individually, but I'll give you some examples of those direct uh, target uh, and uh, direct active uh, antiviral targets. You know. Drugs. The first one is, is the CPAM, which is the capsid assembly inhibitors. So there are two classes of them. They either cause the degradation of the, the capsid or, or they can block the PGRNA encapsidation. So those drugs, you can, you can imagine they can shut down the, the virus replication, especially in the combination with the nucleus analog, they can block the, the precursor, which is the CCC, the, the RC DNA for CCC DNA formation. Uh, and those, those you know, data beautifully show that, you know, those uh, uh, capsid inhibitors, you can block the pre-genomic RNA encapsidation and then lead to the, the, the inhibition of the virus DNA. Of course, the CCC DNA will be reduced through the recycling pathway. And also, there's the interesting, there is also a, matting, a melting mechanism of those CPAMs that can target the, you know, the incoming or the newly synthesized uh, uh, nuclear capsid and, and cause a premature release of the RC DNA and also block the CCC DNA formation. That gives us a hope those CPAMs may, may also inhibit the de novo CCC DNA synthesis. But so far, you know, the clinical trial data you know, uh, have, have demonstrated a strong activity uh, of these CPAMs and also the synergy with the nuke or paglit interferon. However, there, there's still no cure by using those CPAMs uh, and uh, surface antigen serial conversion has not been achieved and the virus relapsed after treatment withdrawal. So to overcome that, I think we need a more potent CPAM or, or, or combination with other uh, replication inhibitors. So this is the SLRA approach, also targeting the viral RNA. So the, the, the beauty of those SRNA approach is because you target the overlapping region of the HBV RNAs, you can pretty much knock down everything that HBV can produce. 
Uh, and by combining the, you know, the target from the, the surface region and, and also the three prime non-translational region, you, you can also target you know, the, the MRI translated from the integrated HPV DNA copy. So there, there's a lot of uh, advantage using this SRA approach to shut down the virus replication and, uh, and antigenemia, but the, you know, the, the limitation that it may help cause, you know, select the virus mutant and the quasi species. And another uh, replication inhibitor is RNH inhibitor that is a monopoly, you know, in uh, John Tavis' lab. So this is the, uh, uh, targeting the RNH activity over the viral polymerase and block the the second strand DNA synthesis, you can see this data show that it caused the, the inhibition caused a, a, a smear of the HPV DNA, which is the DNA RNA duplex. And you can see it doesn't in inhibit the single strand DNA synthesis that much, but completely block the mature RC DNA uh, production. And, and the recent data, as reported in this meeting, so this group showed that those. RNA-CG inhibitor can also block the CCC DNA formation, perhaps through the, the recycling pathway. So for, for the CCC DNA formation, there's, there's several major steps, including the maturation of the RC DNA, the, uh, you know, the partial disassembly of the viral capsid and the transportation of the RC DNA into the nucleus, and then the DNA repair activity to repair those RC DNA into the CCC DNA. So there have been a, a, a you know, a handful of those host DNA repair <laughs> uh, factors have been identified in the CCC DNA formation steps. Some of them are, are enzymes, uh, so and can be uh, can be targeted by by chemicals, and also there those chemicals are available in, in cancer treatment. So so that lead to you know if you, you in, in combination with the nucleus analog and other replication inhibitors, you can block the de novo HPV uh, infection, or you can serve as an additional layer of blocking intracellular CCC DNA uh, amplification. And also those uh, DNA repair inhibitors may also block a CCC DNA repair if that indeed happens. Uh, and the inhibitor of a DNA repair enzyme have been used in cancer therapy. But the, the limitation there, there's no direct effect on the pre-existing CCC DNA. And there's uncertain long-term efficacy and toxicity uh, may happen. And there's a redundant function among the DNA repair genes uh, in the host, so that can may also limit uh, the potency of those uh, approach. You know, there, there, there come to the, you know, the CCC DNA destabilizers. So far, we, we don't have a really a good destabilizer have been identified. This is a, a study reported by a, a Roche group uh, in the ESO meeting in uh, 2019. So they, using the primary human hypothesis, they screened the library and found a compound called the CCCRO8 that can destabilize the CCC DNA. Although the potency is, is, not, is not very optimal, but you can see the hope of the, uh, some compound that can cause the, <coughs> the degradation of the CCC DNA, although the mechanism is not known. And, and also we hope this group can, can publish their data and release all the, all, all the necessary information for the field to further develop this, uh, this kind of strategy. Uh, and for, uh, in terms of the HBV transcription, the viral a protein X protein uh, play a major role uh, in, in shaping the CCC DNA transcription either through the epigenetic or non-epigenetic mechanism. And a recent study showed that the SMAC506 host factor is a silencer of CCC DNA and can be antagonized by X protein. Uh, and this interaction may be uh, developed into an antiviral strategy. Uh, and this, this is a study from a Japanese group. This screened the compound that can inhibit the, you know, the interaction between the HBX and DDB1 call for E3 ubiquitin ligase, which is responsible for SMAC506 degradation. And they identify the NTZ compound that can uh, inhibit the, this interaction and, and, and restore the, the SMAC506 and silence the CCC DNA, although the potency is, is, less, uh, is less optimal. And this is the same group. They also using this MIN4924 compound, which is a NAE inhibitor. It's it's a, a modification of the call for E3 ubiquitin ligase that for degradation of the SMAC56. So this inhibitor can also restore the SMAC56 expression in the HPV uh, infected cells and inhibit the virus transcription. But interestingly, you, you, together with the uh, transcription inhibition, you also see a, a reduction of the CCC DNA copy number. So that gives us a hope that if you inhibit the CCC DNA transcription, you may also lead to the CCC DNA degradation. But the detailed mechanism needed to be further illustrated. 
So this is a study from a, 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 a Chinese group using a, a compound called uh, Decomera. So this compound um, target a host a factor called NK01. This is a, a, a host factor actually can prevent the X protein degradation through the 20S proteasome. So you inhibit this process, you can also restore the SMAC56 uh, expression and, and silence the CCC DNA. And this has been done in the, in the mouse model as well. I think along those lines, CCC uh, CCC DNA inhibitor by targeting the X protein should be a promising uh, pathway to, to achieve that. And, and also, I, I, I I would say, you know, there should be a lot more effort, you know, to specifically looking for CCCDNA inhibitor through the cell-based phenotypic uh, screening effort. So, uh, and, and in regard to this, so our lab have uh, developed the CCCDNA reporter cell lines, either using the e-antigen or the HE tag, the e-antigen as a readout for CCCDNA surrogate marker. Uh, and those cell lines have been uh, used in uh, you know, low throughput to medium throughput screening and has scored some inhibitors targeting different step of CCCDNA uh, metabolism. I think, you know, this can be used for large scale screening for CCCDNA inhibitors. So to summarize, so I think, you know, a cure of hepatitis B requires the elimination of, or permanent inhibition uh, of the CCCDNA transcription. And we need a more basic research on CCCDNA metabolism transcription to identify specific antiviral targets. And combination of CCCDNA inhibitor and other inhibitor targeting different steps in HPV replication cycle is the ideal strategy to achieve the cure. So we can we use a control combination and a cure to eliminate CCCDNA. So my pick for the combination therapy that can eventually uh, reduce the CCCDNA, we, we, we have a nucleus analog because those are approved drugs, they are safe, they are potent, and they should serve as a backbone in, in this combination therapy. And there's other, uh, you know, clinical uh, trial phase compound like CPAM, uh, SRA, and, and the, you know, those can inhibit the DNA replication further, and also SRA can reduce the viremia, uh, the antigenemia. And, and the entry inhibitors, Merclodex B, that has been shown to treat the hepatitis delta, and I, I hope, it, I think it should also work to block HPV uh, spread. Uh, and the last one, we, we definitely, we, we want to, we hope to have a CCCD inhibitor, but we don't have that now, uh, and a lot of work we need to do. So the criteria for the combination therapy in terms of targeting CCC DNA, I think it should be effective uh, on different targets, and they must have synergy, and they are safe, uh, and they are affordable. So I'll stop here and looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful talk, kind of a, a safe pick at the end with all of the target engagements as your favorite. So we'll, at the end of the discussion, we'll, we'll talk also with representatives from industry to, to, to tackle that and to narrow it down potentially.